Uh, we need to say more about ligands so you know exactly what they are. And I'm actually, we'll give you some examples of them. Okay, let's say you have a transition metal. I'll put TM for transition metal. And you add a ligand, I'll put L for ligand. That ligand is going to have a lone pair of electrons. That lone pair of electrons right here will attack the transition metal to form that transition metal now bonded to the ligand. That's one ligand on the metal. It could have many more. Now, a slight review from your acid-base chemistry. When you have an electron pair donor, is that an acid or a base? Yes, this is called a Lewis base an electron pair donor. The thing that accepts the electron is called a Lewis acid. It's an electron pair acceptor. Transition metals, uh, and especially they usually have a positive charge, are acids, have slightly acidic, and they're uh, electron pair acceptors. Ligands are Lewis bases, so you can see why they want to react. An acid likes a base, they want to interact with each other. There are essentially two categories of ligands to know about. One is called the monodentate ligand. This has one pair of electrons to attach to the transition metal. One pair of electrons to attach to the transition metal. Think mono, one, dentate, like dentist, tooth, it's like my uh, Uncle Melvin. Yeah, he's monodentate. He's only got one tooth left. And that's all he can do. He can only bite with one tooth. So these types of ligands bite with one tooth to attach to the transition metal. You can also have polydentate. And this is two or more pairs of electrons. My uncle, he's saying, I don't like to go to the dentist, so if my tooth hurts, I just take a pair of pliers and yank them out and go back to work. He's crazy. When I go to the dentist, I have them give as, me as much uh, drugs as possible. I'm uh, like, drug me up. It's legal, so let's do it. But tomorrow, I'll get the Okay. Uh, often you'll see bidentates, so poly here means many teeth. Often you're going to see bidentates, which is two teeth or two places that it attaches. Uh, let me give you uh, one example, uh, and then I'll show you the ones you need to know. Uh, there is uh, uh, a complex I used to work with called uh, dicarbonyl rhodium acid. And what this looks like is it's a rhodium bonded to two carbonyl groups and bonded to an ACAC, -ac, which is a, a kind of an acetate <coughs> group. And it looks like this. Okay, the right hand side is the ACAC, -ac, the left hand side are the two carbonyls. These here are what kind of ligand? These are monodentate. They're attaching by one pair of electrons. On the right-hand side, you're seeing a bidentate. So here, these are attaching one there and another carbonyl here. The ACAC -ac is attaching in two places. So using, in this case, two pairs of electrons, or it's a bidentate ligand. Another term for a bidentate or polydentate ligand is called a chelating ligand. It's just another term for it. You hear sometimes. Okay, let me give you some examples uh, for the ones you need to know. And this is in uh, table 24.2. You got to know all these. Uh, I think there's not too many, around 15 or so, maybe slightly more, where, where actually you don't really have to worry about these two here at the bottom. 
methylamine or pyridine. We're not going to use those. Uh, but otherwise, uh, there's three types, so let me break it down. In this column is the neutral ligands. These have no charge. They have lone pairs, they're Lewis bases, but they have no charge. That's water, ammonia, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen monoxide. But they have special names you must memorize. Water is aqua. Uh, ammonia is amine with two M's. You've got to spell that right. Carbon, see, uh, carbon monoxide is carbonyl, and nitrogen monoxide is nitrosyl. Um, over here on these two categories, we have the negatively charged ligands. Whenever you have a negatively charged ligand, you put the suffix is O. So fluorine is fluoro, chlorine chloro, bromo iodo, uh, oxo from oxygen or oxide, hydroxyl turns to hydroxo, cyanide, cyano. Over here, same thing. Notice all the O endings. Sulfate, sulfato. If it was sulfite, it was sulfito. Thylosulfato, uh, nitrito. By the way, on your online labs, these also can be called nitro. Uh, just a slight thing to notice. In different regions, different areas, there's slightly different ways to term ligands and other transition metal complexes. Uh, because of that, you'll see slight variations. So from our text, to what you see in our online labs, there are slight differences. And these are called nitro, sometimes, thiocyanato. Uh, and you'll see these capital letters here. This thiocyanato, when the sulfur bonds to the metal, has a capital S here. When the nitrogen bonds to the metal, you'll see a capital N here. The same up here. When the N bonds to the metal for the nitro group, then uh, you see the capital N when it's oxygen, then you see a capital O after the name. So that's just a term, just to show us, okay, what is actually bonding to the metal. These are monodentate ligands. Now let's look at the polydentate ligands. Those are all so exciting. There are three to know, for you at least. Okay. The most common by far that you will see is the first one, EN. EN is the abbreviation. It's called ethylene diamine. You need to know how to spell it. Uh, it has the word amine in it, but in contrast to the monodentate ligand, there's only one M. So no, spell that correctly. Only one M in ethylene diamine, not two like amine. Okay, why is it called an ethylene diamine? Well, there's two amines, so diamine here. And whenever you have an organic complex uh, that uh, has two carbons, the prefix is eth. So like ethane has two carbons. So this is ethylene diamine. It attaches right here and here, the two nitrogens. So know what that looks like and know the abbreviation and the name. The next one you won't see as often is oxalato. It comes from the oxalate ion. Thus, we put an O as the su suffix. Remember, like oxalic acid. That's oxalate. That's this. That's the oxalate uh, ion. But in its abbreviated OX, it has a minus 2 charge, where the ethylene diamine has no charge. So, minus 2 for that one. The last one, you don't have to need to, you don't need to know how to draw, um, but it attaches in six places. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so fully eats up the metal. You're going to do a lab with this. It's EDTA. It's four minus. Um, so you're pretty much going to see this last one only in lab. But it's a nice thing. It gets heavy metals out of the bloodstream. So it has a neat applications. So, but you do need to know uh, those three.